Well, folks, we're just finishing up here. Doing the last jeweling on the my separator here. So she's pretty much done. Um, so it did in fact uh, close up a little bit. I, I had to do some tricky stuff here. So when I did the three rivets, um, these these were pretty. Uh, the length of this one was kind of critical to get the right uh, mushroom kind of head on it. Um, actually, it was pretty critical on all of them. But as I said, you know, putting putting this together, getting the um, uh, the liner halves glued to the maple, um, it's pretty tricky, you know, to keep that epoxy off of off of this burn pattern that I did on the knife. Um, so then, uh, putting this on the anvil and pounding this over, what I basically did, I don't have my shim stock, but I took a piece of 2000 shim stock and folded it over, um, on each side of the blade. You can see it's a little stiff here opening up, but I think that's going to work in. So when I, I left it in this open position and I put the shim stock on this side and then wrapped it around and so I basically had four thousandths of clearance uh, between the liner halves and the blade and it was snug I when I riveted this over um, it was it was a little bit snug getting those shims out of there that shim stock um, but it, it turned out to be enough there, she opened full. So it's close, and I think it's going to work in. Um, I wound up just going with uh, some real old finishes I had. They're, they're from, uh, I think they're both from New England here, actually. Yeah, Marlboro, Mass., and this one's from Old Sabra, Connecticut. This is like a, an oil finish um, polish, oil finish polish. I'm sure it's got like turpentine in it. And then, you know, the old butcher's wax, bowling alley wax. So I'm going to do some hand rubbed wax coating, you know, a few coats of that wax on here. And um, so, I don't know, I think it came out pretty decent. It pretty much functions, and the, and the more that I work it in, I think it's close. So I'll just, I'll just keep working it in. But there's a... 1930s, an inexpensive 1930s knife. I bet this probably costs less than five bucks in the 30s. It might have been two dollars, dollar fifty or two bucks. So I gave it a new life, and uh, maybe the grandkids will, maybe the grandkids will get it. We'll see. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna be somebody's pocket knife, that's for sure. Or maybe it will. Who knows? So thanks for watching the series. This is the last one. And uh, I appreciate your time. Bye now.